through so really public works kind of recommendations which don't get reflected in zoning okay. or the municipal code. So that's, so that's why, why they're, they're not, not in that list of but, 11 yeah, down, that, down below. Okay. Right, right. Okay. Um, getting back to my agenda. Um, So do I hear a motion? Yeah, I, I move minutes? that we approve the minutes um, as amended um, to take into consideration um, Sam Hertz, is it Hertzberg? Hertzberg's uh, comments via letter that we all received. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 One abstention. One abstention. Um, the next item on the agenda is new business, and I believe we're getting a study session on the East Side Connectivity Project. Yes, we are, and I would like to, you have a brief staff report that um, mentions what the process is, and you are part of it. Um, so Brian Fletcher of Calendar Associates and uh, Jason Mansfield of BKF are here to kind of run you through the presentations, and then you can have um, conversation and comment. Thank you, commissioners. I really appreciate the opportunity to come before you tonight and, and, and present the project. My name is Brian Fletcher. I'm with Calendar Associates. We're the prime um, consultant on the job. I'm also a local resident of, resident of San Carlos. So needless to say, I'm really excited about the project and uh, Really excited about the open house that we had just a few weeks ago and the interest and the excitement that we had with that So tonight is to give you an introduction about the project you probably already know about it But it's kind of a confusing project So I want to do that and then I want to give you a little bit of a glimpse of of what we heard at the open house and most importantly I want to hear from you and what your thoughts and and what opportunities you see um, having driven walked uh, resided in uh, this area um, what's the easiest way? Do I just press the button? Just click. just click on anything. I'm clicking. Go to slide. Let's see. Let me go get our IT guy. Oh. Oh. Okay. There you go. All you have to say is they off and IT running, guy. right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> let's see if I can. Uh, well, let's leave it up there just in case it continues. We basically were brought on board to do a number of things. Uh, first off is to reach out to the community and, and find out. Uh, what the community wants to see as part of the Old County Road and East San Carlos kind of corridors, which is the main focus. Um, some of the other aspects of it were undergrounding utility lines, improvements to Old County Road, essentially from Belmont all the way down to Redwood City. Obviously, because of budget, there's varying degrees of improvements that are going to be made. Um, Bike Boulevard was part of an MTC grant. Um, we are currently evaluating that. That Bike Boulevard uh, was proposed on East San Carlos Avenue uh, to make a better connection between Industrial Road and um, the train station itself. Uh, finally, Class Two bike lanes, uh, where possible, where feasible. We are currently evaluating the, the right-of-way, and, and obviously we've got kind of a constrained right-of-way. In areas we're going to be able to do Class Two bike lanes. In other areas, we may not be able to do that and then be able to do Class 3 with Sharrows. Um, and then pavement rehab of the entire corridor. Hey, it is working. Thank you. We, when the, first, when the, the project initially had this really long, drawn-out name, since then it's been shrunk to Eastside Connect. Still, that name is what is it? You know, what, what is Eastside Connect? So, we tried to, and we presented these boards at farmers markets and such, just to give people a glimpse of what it could be. Um, it's basically San Carlos Avenue and, and East San Carlos Avenue and Old County Road. That's the focus. Utility undergrounding, wider, potentially wider sidewalks, removal of obstructions, bulb outs are another opportunity, basically, pedestrian enhancements, connectivity to major elements, whether it's downtown, L'Oreola Park. 
improving bike safety, so not just pedestrian safety, looking at all modes of transportation, bikes, peds, cars. Um, taking a look at beautification of the corridor, street trees and rain gardens, installation of pedestrian lights, and other art and wayfinding elements that could dramatically enhance the corridor uh, for people uh, of all of San Carlos. And again, we were presenting the project limits as essentially Old County Road and East San Carlos Avenue. We had the first of two public workshops. Uh, we called it our open house. We had it on um, July 30th on a Saturday for four hours. It was great. We had, um, we had about 40 to 50 people show up, very positive, and I kind of want to show some of the input that came from this. Um, we gave people a questionnaire, simple, lots of questions to fill out. We're still currently tabulating this, but I wanted to give you some of the, some of the input. Uh, where do you live and work? You know, so you can see where people are coming from for this workshop, generally from the neighborhood. Um, how do you use Old County Road? Shop, eat, drive to work? So you can see by the number of votes or tabulations where the majority of the people were. Where are your biggest concerns? Okay, so this starts to it starts to to have a focus to the project where we need to definitely keep a focus: pedestrian safety, traffic, noise, parking. So what we did is we tried to give pictures, and, and people respond generally more towards pictures rather than to drawings or anything else. We call these inspiration images, and we categorize these by. Uh, different areas of parking, where was it most important for people to park, and, and so forth. We gave people stickers. I think a couple of you were, were actually at the open house. Gave people stickers, and they got to put those stickers on what images they felt most strongly about. So you can see we looked at parking locations. We looked at pedestrian improvements. We looked at bicycle options and other enhancements, rain gardens, site furnitures, plant art, lighting. So these are a little bit backwards, and I apologize. So um, on this case, it's actually the, the highest votes are down at the bottom, and, and lowest votes are up at the top. But you can start to see where people started putting their stickers down. Wider sidewalks, street trees, crosswalks, lighting. So again, these kind of go hand in hand with what we heard before as far as pedestrian improvements kind of being the, the number one. Hmm. What amenities do you want to see? Again. Wider sidewalks, trees and plants, art, bike lanes. We had a great, great map that went out. And we basically wanted, this, wanted people to tell us, where, where do you live? Where do you walk? How do you get there? Tell us where the problem areas are. And just gave them some pens to look at. These are just samplings of, of that uh, diagram. You know, you can see El Camino and, and Holly Street, the big X with a mess. A lot of focus was on. Old County and Holly Street in that intersection, as well as uh, getting across the train station. There was focus of the Royal Undercrossing, uh, making better and safer connections there, as well as north of Holly Street, trees, trees, trees. So again, you begin to see the flavor of the comments from the participants. We also gave them a, a, an additional questionnaire to respond to on, on uh, some imagery that we had on there. Um, you notice in the, the prior slide there was images of parking. We wanted to get from people, we're looking for opportunity areas, obviously. Right now we've got a constrained corridor, we've got two travel lanes, we've got generally parking on both sides. Are there parking areas that people would be open to eliminating in order to get wider sidewalks, bike lanes, or something else? Um, generally the focus were high priority on the residential side parking and business side parking, which would be all the parking on the east side of Old County Road. And then limited votes for the parking on, very limited votes on the parking on the west side, which is a Caltrain side. Um, with the exception of the parking close to the train station, there's probably about 15 stalls just, just south of the train station there that are used by people that don't want to pay for parking in the, in the regular lot. Um, one of the questions that we asked is because a lot of these improvements can improve identity of the corridor. We're going to be improving aesthetics and things like lighting and other character elements can build identity. So we wanted to ask people what they felt the identity of East San Carlos was. And, and it was interesting because 
in this question, when, you, when we asked it this way, people felt they were different than the rest of San Carlos. However, when we showed them lighting, simple lighting, you know, what type of fixture do you like to see? Do you want to see something that is from downtown, which is the traditional acorn fixture, El Camino, a traditional but more modern fixture, or something totally different and modern? When we asked them that question, this is what we got. Okay, so what this is telling me is right now they feel like they are, that that neighborhood is different, but they want to be more, they want to be brought into the fold. So if we can bring elements and details from downtown and, and the other parts of San Carlos to make it one unified community, that's what people are looking for. So I'm here to listen tonight. Tomorrow we're presenting at the Transportation and Circulation Commission. Um, from that, we're gonna take all the input and develop refined concept plans that we're gonna then present back to a community workshop on September 7th. I believe it's a Wednesday night, um, again, over at Loreola Park. Um, we're going to then refine those based upon the input and present those concepts at council on September 26th. Then we move into construction documents. It's gonna take some time, but we've got a deadline with MTC. That's where the majority of our funding is coming from, at least for the non-undergrounding portion. We have to get those done by February 1st. Plans into Caltrans for review, for approval of the E76. Absolutely doable, I have confidence that that can be done. Um, there is flexibility. We have a second portion not funded through MTC, which is the undergrounding. Um, that's gonna take a little bit of time. Um, so we're going to essentially have two paths that are going to hopefully come together and we're going to go out to bid uh, late summer uh, 2012 um, into fall of 2012 and start construction then. So that's, that's the, the time frame as it sits right now. With that, I'm, I'm all ears tonight and answer any questions and, and most importantly, take your feedback. Deborah, should we start with the public is this open to um, so let's hear if there's anybody you'd like to can you state your name Ben Fuller 1035 Sylvan Drive president of Gregory San Carlos neighborhood uh, yeah I want to concur with what we just saw uh, and everyone thinks that this neighborhood has just lost every battle but this is actually our first significant thing and we got Deborah here who I know was uh, one of the key architects of the, the grant proposal and the idea, and, and Al, who's not here. Um, and in our attempt to work more closely with you guys, we want to you know, acknowledge the importance of this, this incredible project and how it might help us connect our neighborhood and, and our, our residents to the services and, and, and businesses in this area. So a uh, couple things that were brought up that, that are worth delineating, one of which is, um, is the issue of the Holly Street, Old County Road, sort of, uh, pedestrian safety issue yeah it, it's it's yeah it, it, it's very scary um, and there's really not enough space for folks to cross and um, so we did mention that in detail uh, as, as being a main issue um, the other issue is the larger greater East San Carlos vision which is as you you, you figure out the final zoning for uh, the the industrial commercial and um, residential around our neighborhood and how it relates to our residential we believe that the green belt of trees that this particular project is going to start and we hope to encircle the entire neighborhood with eventually um, is an incredibly important thing and uh, so we're very excited to have those trees and there were a lot of people that denotated trees finally I'll just say that um, just, just the fact that you guys are here listening and working on this project is so much appreciated. So thanks a lot to all you guys for, for what you're doing. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? No? Commissioners, would you like to comment on it? Oh, do we have to close this public hearing? It's not really a public no, it's hearing. A study it's a study session. Just a study okay, session. Yeah. This is a no-brainer for me. I think it's the best thing uh, I've seen in a long time, and it has nothing to do with East San Carlos. It just has to do with improving the entire area. I mean, why wouldn't anybody want to do that? I do have one question though about the undergrounding thing. Is that a PG&E issue? Uh, just a technical thing. I, I, I always thought that you they they have a, a program with their undergrounding uh, as they go. 
Yeah, I mean, maybe Deborah can talk more about the Rule 20A fundings that, that it's coming from, but there are certain funds. That's why it's separate from the MTC grant. Right. Um, that can be utilized for undergrounding of utilities. Um, so that's what that's what we're doing right now. We're also evaluating right now how fu how far those funds can go. Right. Uh, we've got an electrical engineer on board that has been studying all the various drops and and the technical issues that are are required in order to get those underground, where boxes and vaults are going to have to go and, and such. So um, it's an ongoing process that we think we're going to be able to bring a recommendation to council. Um, and, and the rest of the community at the workshop on, on where we think we've got budget to take that undergrounding. Um, you know, that'll happen on September 7th, and the council um, who will approve the undergrounding district on September 26th. Just a, a little more on that. We have $1.2 million, and we're looking at, uh, we're, we're working with a steering committee, and the priority has been been that we first looked at, at Old County Road in the streets, the residential streets that front Old County Road. So our first priority is about Terminal North to Northfield. Northwood. Or Riverton. Northam. Northwood. Northwood. Thank you. <laughs> um, then with money, any money that we have in excess of that, and there will be some, is to look at what we might be able to do on East San Carlos Avenue. But um, at, to Mr. Fuller's point, that does kind of coincide with where we want to tree up Old County Road, too. So you can get more trees if you have more room in the sidewalk sure. to put them. So that's no our... That's, you, you know, it's not stated as a gateway in, in the general plan, but it, it, it's not just El Camino Holly and Old County Holly, but that whole strip is a gateway to neighborhoods, and we want that to look a lot better. So that's our priority. We'll, we'll get more on that as we get closer to September 26th with the council. Quick question about the undergrounding. If you have to stop short of the end of the residential area, would you put the infrastructure in place to be able to underground that later? Or is that? Are we, we're getting pretty confident that we're going to be able to do all the undergrounding within the residential area on Old County Road. Okay. I think uh, based, I think we can say that with confidence based upon the initial estimates that have been coming in? Yeah. Uh, the northern, uh, the northernmost line, we could, we're trying to go um, not quite to Taylor, but past the residential neighborhood, including maybe the multifamily building that's adjacent on the north side. The, it adds, that piece is a lot more expensive, however. It's only two more poles north-south but there is a crossing over the joint powers uh, right away, and that's expensive to bore under and go to El Camino. So we are going to look at how far the money goes, have more conversations about what's your priority here. And uh, if we decide that we will not underground those last two, then it would be an opportunity to do a greater bulb out landscape up um, there's already some trees there that kind of hide the uppermost portion of that, but um, we'll look at several alternatives. And you can add the underground districts later. Or we could make the choice to make the underground district bigger and then hope we find money <laughs> and not do as much. Okay. Comments? I like it. Yeah. I like it, and um, I also really like the public outreach that I saw, at least, at the farmer's market, and um, the workshops were great. So, can I, can I take this opportunity to ask you some questions, possibly? Yes. Sure. What, uh, do you have any specific views there? Holly Street intersection, uh, taxi stand, waiting of taxis, do they belong there? Do they be moved? Um, do you have any thoughts? Holly Street, what right now we're looking at is, is traffic movements on Holly Street. Right now we've got uh, a lot of lanes on Old County Road. 
there's a right if you're going northbound you have a right turn lane a through lane and a left turn lane mm -hmm. uh, going southbound you have the same if traffic movements weren't that significant uh, for those right turn lanes uh, would there's opportunities to maybe remove those um, to have wider sidewalks to possibly even get in a, a median to have a left turn pocket into L'Oreal Park um, these are all just ideas that that we're still exploring but um, I thought I'd take your take some expertise from you yeah, I don't really have a point of view about that part of it other than I assume there's a there's a traffic study that somebody's going to do with there's because yep. you don't want to make a situation worse but I I'm I've been over there before and had to try to cross that street to take my 11 year old to get something and it's like it's death city because you come out of Loreoto Park and you have to walk all the way up to the corner just to get across the street and you got people cutting right across that thing on a regular basis it, it really is not a very good place especially when you have kids yeah, I'd be fascinated to see the traffic study as mm -hmm. well it, I mean I avoid the area by foot at all costs okay. I have lots of comments <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, the whole area around the, the existing Caltrain station is um, needs help. Um, the, the problem is that the crosswalk is in the middle of a block rather than at the end of a block, mm -hmm. and it really should be moved so that um, vehicles that are, are traveling on Old County recognize that there are... Um, there are pedestrians crossing there. I've seen cars blow through red lights there. I've seen them inch all the way up to the sidewalk because they're unclear as to exactly where they're supposed to stop in that intersection. Um, so uh, that's if if we could somehow move that crosswalk to one of the streets, probably something like East San Carlos mm -hmm. Avenue. That would be a, a good option. Um, the other thing I see is that typically when I take Caltrain back and forth to work, um, there are the whole kiss and ride area is completely filled with taxis. And in fact, sometimes it's so filled that there's five of them there and two of them parked across the street. And that's a 10 minute parking zone. and. Um, they're only there because we've actually asked to have the shuttles moved out of that area in order to provide um, space for people to drop off. Um, so one idea would be to try and move the taxis to the other side. Mm. Um, the other side of Old County or other, the side, other side of, of the Caltrain? Station. The other side of the station. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm guessing, but my understanding is that the taxis are coming from Redwood Shores, where it's cheaper to actually pay for somebody to get to the Caltrain station in a taxi than to have a shuttle program set up all the time. So I have a feeling that a lot of those taxis aren't even people who are living or working in San Carlos. They're just using the Caltrain station. and. Um, so that's another another concern is how to do that. I'd love to see some public art there. I think it would be great to to have something um, there. Um, all along the corridor, the um, there's three uh, three entrances or three places that's underground um, where you can get through the the berm. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people come out of those things and just not look either way and come right out into the street so there there needs to be some better mechanism for bikes and pedestrians to to um, um, be aware that they're stepping out out of those onto a, a fairly busy street um, I really like the idea of bulb outs and wider sidewalks and as many trees as you can plant um, the, uh, getting the, the poles out of the middle of the sidewalk, repairing the sidewalks, um, all of those are great ideas. Great. Can you go back to the crosswalk again on the, that would be on the east side of the berm? 
Yes. It's in the middle? Right now. Is there, it's in is the there, middle. Is there a, I can't remember. Is there a flashing yellow light there? There is a stop light. You yeah. actually mm -hmm. press the button and it will. No, no, no. That's not what I meant. So there is a light that's flashing yellow, isn't it? Like a caution light? No. Just a normal. Bit. Okay. No, it's, so a, it's a red, green, yellow light. So is it, and it's pedestrian driven? It's pedestrian driven, yes. I, I just was sitting here thinking about that. It seems to me that if a train was coming, why wouldn't that thing just automatically go to a flashing red light, period? How hard would that be? So the people automatically, when the train comes in, because that's when everybody unloads or loads, yeah. it stops, it's going to stop the traffic. They're going to have to stop. Because it's only a very short period of time. The train, then the train takes off and you, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. wait five or 20 seconds or whatever it happens to be, and then that would solve some of, that would put because a little more it, of a safety it, issue. It actually takes time for people to get off the train and down and across and, and well, things there, like that. It, so there's a trigger mechanism that you yeah. have to put into it that yeah. would probably work. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that is dangerous. At the same time, allowing the movements off the train and making making these crosswalks more accessible. Right now, that crosswalk, you, you come down the stairs and you, then you have to go southbound and then across. It's it's not very intuitive. Right. Yeah. You know, it's it's if you make these crosswalks a little bit easier and, and to get to and highly visible, as well as the push buttons and, and the timing of those push buttons, I think that could also work as well. Um, and someone said getting them, getting them too closer to the intersection makes it, a lot of sense. If you're too. going north, you actually have to walk all the way down to the south end of the station mm -hmm. in order to cross and go across. So nobody who goes north actually uses the light mm -hmm. because they're all either going to walk down to Holly, which is dangerous, or they just cross in the middle of the street sure. mm -hmm. um, as they're walking. Another idea is a brick in the in the ground where that crosswalk would be so that you actually have a difference between the pavement so that people actually recognize that there are pedestrians crossing there in addition to um, lights um, well, they have those flashing pedestrian yeah, lights that's now yeah another. that's that's another option for for that um, Sometimes I think the light is too short, and sometimes I think the light is too long there. And I see people get in cars get impatient if one person presses the button, and then all of a sudden they somebody starts to, you know, one person walks, and then they sit there and wait long enough. I see them edging up, <laughs> like the light's going to change immediately. Um, it's really interesting to sit there and watch it the is. social dynamics of that intersection and it people is. coming off of Caltrain. And you can watch the taxi drivers scream at each other yeah. and, you know, I mean, it's it's almost like a, a, a little interesting uh, area. Yeah. Um, does anybody have anything else? No, I don't. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Um, we have no public hearings, so we will skip that, and we'll move on to uh, reports, reports, correspondence, and general information. Any reports on recent city council actions? No, the, the council's uh, been on recess, returning August 22nd, so nothing to report. Planning Commission comments or reports? The only comment I had was actually to Sam, who's leaving, but um, I just happened to glance at my notes. We did address a lot of the things that were in his letter. It just, I think his, it, he was just concerned that it wasn't reflected in the minutes. I just hope he knows that, that we addressed, I mean, transitions, we probably had a 40-minute discussion on. Yes. Um, light industrial, in and out, even though that was separate from the zoning conversations, we, we definitely touched on that. And noise, again, we had to have talked about it for yes. at least another 30 minutes. So I just wanted to make that, that point that we certainly didn't ignore his comment and, and in I any think, way. We, we really addressed those issues. I think, Ms. Nelson, when you do speak with them again, you can also point out that you know, we weren't able to address the comments, like Mr. Marsher said, but also the note, the, the minutes are not meant to be comprehensive. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to say that at the Residential Design Review Committee today, we had a project 
151 Coronado, which will be coming to us in the next couple of weeks, probably within the next month. On appeal? No. Okay. We, uh, as the Residential Design Review Committee, sat as a made a recommendation to bring it okay. to the to the um, Planning Commission. Um, correspondence. You had one in your packet, which uh, we received the night of the public hearing on the zoning ordinance, and had addressed the zoning ordinance. It was following a Residential Design Review Committee meeting. There was no appeal of that project. And then you have another letter on your dais tonight, which we will, we will refer to the Sheriff's Department. It's not in the Planning Commission's purview, although it was addressed to you. Thank you. Um, any other comments, reports, or updates, current projects? Um, j j just further on the, um, the letter that we re sent to you from Mr. Mars, uh, from uh, Mr. Herzberg, that will be um, attached to the City Council's packet and addressed, will be a paragraph addressing the correspondence we received. And um, we've begun to write that and Planning Commission, although you didn't go point by point by point of the letter, um, you addressed almost everything in it. Right. with your motions and, and discussion. So we will reflect that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that being said, uh, meeting's adjourned.